Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I want to talk about the latest update for Squad. It came out yesterday, and this bumps Squad up to Alpha version 6. And it's been a fairly substantial update, I imagine, for the dev team as well, since they have incorporated a lot of new features with the Unreal Engine 4.11 update. And I'll talk about some of the under the hood improvements, but first there's been a Browning M2 machine gun that you can basically build and deploy in cool locations around the map. So basically, you can create your own little pillbox Boxes and these things just tear people down. I believe it's a one-shot kill no matter where you shoot somebody with this thing. It's awesome looking, fun to use. The reload animation isn't quite in there yet. Again, this game is alpha, so it's not even a full feature-rich version of the game yet. And they've also added a new map. The map is called Gorodok, and it's inspired by Eastern European uh, geography, basically. There's a lot of forest, there's some fields, there's some sort of wooden houses and stuff. I got to play it once in a map rotation. It was kind of crazy. I didn't know it that well. Very wide open map. So if you like to sort of take your time and scan those ridge lines for enemy movement, then this map would be for you. And they've also updated a lot of the other maps, whether it's small changes or large changes. Sumari has actually seen a huge update that uh, has basically changed the map into something that I didn't even recognize that much from the first iteration. So it's pretty Pretty cool to see these massive changes coming in. The game's starting to look a little bit more fleshed out. I wouldn't say polished, but you're starting to see all the details come in and the, the city maps are starting to feel a little bit more real. Maps such as Fool's Road have had tunnels added to them. This is something that the devs have been showing off in their dev blogs. The fact that there's going to be a bunch of subterranean compounds and tunnels connecting other buildings together is a really cool concept. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I wasn't able to hop onto a Fool's Road map yet. But uh, I'm looking forward to it just because the insane forest combat in that map can get a little bit overwhelming at times. And it would be nice to have like a corridor. I can't believe I'm saying it, but a corridor from time to time to kind of simplify the combat. They've also added a bunch of new effects to make the foliage feel more lifelike. The interaction is more realistic. For example, the running streams in some of the maps that before you could just run through and sneak up behind people, you now make a lot of sound if you're trudging through the water. So so you'll be able to use that to pinpoint your enemies or it'll keep you from moving through it just because you don't want to make any sound. Along with that comes foliage sound as well and I actually noticed it uh, very very substantially uh, being able to track down and locate enemies. You hear them pushing through grass, you hear them moving around bushes, even uh, dirt and just walking around cities I could hear people on other sides of walls from me pretty clearly which was very cool. Because squad leans so far towards real Realism, having a good sound system that interacts with the environment realistically, giving off sound cues to let you know where your enemies are, is very important because we're not using any sort of 3D spotting system or any sort of mini map that's going to highlight where enemy fire is coming from or anything like that. You have to use your eyes and ears to locate the baddies and occasionally your map system, but that's mostly just people saying, hey, I saw some guys in this general area. So that's about as good as it gets for pinpointing your enemies using those kind of visual aids like that. So having this upgraded sound system, it really does add a new layer to the game and it's probably one of my favorite updates. They're also planning on adding foliage collision to the game soon. In fact, I think it's been partially implemented on some maps here. I didn't get to test it out on the maps I was playing, or at least I didn't notice it. But it's basically where if you're running, say, past a tree or a bush, it'll bend the branches out of your way. And if you go prone and you're crawling around, which is a very big part of this game, especially on big, wide open maps, uh, you'll push the grass out of your face or out of your way so you can actually see in front of you. And that's actually going to be a pretty big deal when they implement that on all maps. Now, as far as under the hood improvements goes, apparently there's a pretty long list of things that they've changed and improved upon in this update. It's hard to say how much of an effect it's actually had on the user end. Uh, thus far, uh, all I saw when I was trying to play today was people just complaining about the frame rate. I was able to get around 60 to 70 frames when I set my resolution down to 1080p and lowered some of my graphic settings, but this game has never run particularly fast, and I imagine they have a lot more stuff that they're planning on doing to try and improve the performance overall, but I have a pretty damn fast computer and if I can barely squeak out 60 to 70 frames per second at 1080p, that means they're going to have to do quite a bit more. Unfortunately, some of the guys on my team or in my squad were complaining about getting like 23 frames per second 
or even less than that at times. Some people are saying if you turn off all the shadows, you can get better uh, frame rate, but unfortunately this game looks like garbage if you turn off all the shadows. And it also gives you kind of a little bit of a visual advantage. So I hope that at some point they sort of make it that there's at least a, a mandatory amount of shadows or shading uh, to, to a certain degree. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of weird having that that difference of graphical fidelity across the board. Unfortunately, we still don't have vehicles of any type yet in the game. I know the developers are working on completely retooling the vehicle network code. Apparently they're running into some pretty big issues with that early on. So they've they've gone and started reworking that completely. There is a pretty in-depth dev blog on that and everything that they're doing, which is cool. I love that they, they're releasing these blogs at the end of each month, letting us know what sort of big things they're working working on and sometimes even more frequently than that. And as someone who is an early adopter of the game, I always appreciate these kind of updates because I'm very much interested in the progression of Squad. I think it's a blast to play. It's really fun. Um, and it's certainly more inviting than I think Arma was for me just because the learning curve is less severe um, and you can kind of get into the action a little bit faster. Now the UI has also gone through some significant updates. In fact, the amount of updates that they've done to Squad is really substantial. And if you want to know all of them, I recommend checking out their latest uh, release notes on it because it's just huge. There's pages and pages and pages of updates to user interface, sound, network code, all that stuff. The UI, as I was saying, looks a lot better. The map looks cleaner. It went back to color. I think it was black and white for a second there. Um, it's just easier to read, easier to understand overall. I still think it would be kind of nice if they had the tiny little keypad numbers maybe in the bottom corner of the squares on the map just because when people are giving very specific keypad callouts, um, I know that some people don't even know what that means and so the coordination and squad or team cohesion can be thrown off a little bit when people get more specific with the map. The other thing that I feel has to be implemented implemented to this game is um, the indication of what capture points you can capture in what order. Um, if you go on the website, you can see sort of graphics showing the little lattice links between points and what order you have to capture them in. Um, but when you're actually in game, you don't see those lattice links. And so it can be difficult unless you know that map by heart uh, to know which point to go to next. And even when playing with people who have clearly played the game before, there is still quite a bit of confusion. And sometimes a bunch of us would go over to the wrong capture point point, we'd be sitting around like, why aren't we capping? Oh crap, it's not in the right order of the lattice link. And that's just something that, yeah, you can fix with how much you play the game and you'll learn the maps better, but it's also kind of a failure on the basic user interface instructional part of the game. Anyway, it's quite fun to watch this game develop and evolve. It's getting better and better. The vehicle update, I'm sure, will be incredibly substantial and I can't wait to see what that looks like, even if it is just like some Hummers or something like that driving around some of the dirt roads. It's going to be very interesting and it'll put a much bigger emphasis on some of the infantry that carry weapons that can take out vehicles like the guy carrying the RPG. So I'm still following the game pretty closely. I, I think the biggest hurdle that this game has ahead of it honestly is just the performance improvement because they're trying to do something that nobody really does which is have kind of an infinite render distance with an entirely fleshed out detailed city in front of people at times or a whole valley with poppy fields and foliage and trees and buildings and you're basically rendering more polygons than any other game tries to do which is cool it adds this weird sense of realism when you see it but at the same time it is such a performance hindrance so if they can get that figured out to the point where somebody with an average system can actually play the game and have it look somewhat decent with a decent frame rate then I think squad is without question going to be a huge hit anyway Way, that kind of wraps it up for the alpha 6 update if you haven't played squad yet it is pretty fun it's worth a try but it's still quite buggy and there's a lot of issues with it it is an alpha at the end of the day if you're holding off on getting this game waiting for some cooler updates it might be worthwhile to wait for the vehicle update as i imagine that's going to be pretty awesome as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off